On the 27th of September, war broke out between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Both sides accused the other of starting the current fighting, but what is certain is that the Azeris crossed the line of contact, the de facto border, with tanks, armoured infantry and heavy artillery support. They have also made very effective use of unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, something they had invested heavily in before the start of the conflict. The two countries have a bloody mutual history. Both briefly achieved independence in 1918, after World War I, and rapidly ended up fighting each other. This fighting rolled on to 1920, when both countries were annexed by the Soviet Union. When that nation collapsed, full-scale fighting was started in 1992 over the Nagorno-Karabakh region. This area is internationally recognised as Azerbaijan territory, but the population was predominantly Armenian. Fighting went on until 1994, when a ceasefire was signed. Armenia had taken substantial tracts of what had been Azerbaijan territory, not just the contested Nagorno-Karabakh enclave, but several surrounding regions. No one can say for sure what the costs were, but an estimated 6,000 Armenians and perhaps as many as 25,000 Azeris died. Negotiations with international mediators have continued since then. However, the reality on the ground was that ethnic Armenians now controlled the land that the international community considered legally to be Azerbaijan. This area officially became the internationally unrecognised Republic of Artsakh, although in reality this is effectively part of Armenia. Fighting has periodically occurred since then, including a four-day conflict in 2016 and fighting in July this year. The current situation on the ground is still very uncertain. Both sides make estimations of the other's casualties whilst denying the claims of their rival. These claims are certainly inflated, making the truth very difficult to assess. However, at the time of this video being released, the war has certainly killed several hundred people, possibly into thousands. Although the war is currently bad enough, it is looking increasingly that the conflict is not just garnering the attention of the bigger regional powers, but possibly being fuelled by them. The Turkish president, Tayyip Erdogan, has been bellicose from the start of the conflict in support of Azerbaijan, and continues to state that the only way for fighting to end is for Armenia to immediately withdraw from territory it was occupying in Azerbaijan. Turkey, a close ally of Azerbaijan, has been accused of sending Islamist mercenaries from Syria to assist the Azeris, as it has previously in Libya. This has been denied by the Azerbaijan government. For the Armenians, the prospect of Turkish invasion is one that evokes old memories. The Armenian Genocide, which saw perhaps as many as 1.5 million Armenians killed by the Ottoman Empire, is still very much remembered by the current generation. On 29th September, the Armenians accused the Turks of taking an active role in the conflict, stating that one of their Su-25 attack jets had been shot down by a Turkish F-16. In a war marked with constant accusations and denials, this claim was refuted. However, as the day previously, the Armenians had warned that the use of F-16s against them would lead to them possibly using their Iskander short-range ballistic missile systems in response, the accusation from the Armenians may be a sign of their increasing desperation. Another key factor is Russia. With close ties to Azerbaijan and a military alliance with Armenia, including having a large base in the country, Moscow has been reticent to get involved. In public statements, the Kremlin has called on Turkey to assist efforts to achieve a ceasefire, but there have been a number of allegations of Russian arms shipments being sent to Armenia. With Russia also trying to maintain its position abroad, it is possible that President Putin may need to take action if the Armenians falter or the Turks start to play an open role. Losing Russia's foothold in the southern Caucasus would be a serious blow to Russia's prestige and a further reinforcement for Turkey's aggressive foreign policy. Unfortunately, the brutal truth is that whilst the politicians manoeuvre and talk, it is the soldiers that are the ones paying the price. If you want to know more about the war in Nagorno-Karabakh, check out the links in the description for an article at Overt Defence on the conflict. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found the video of interest. If you are into military affairs and history, check out some of my other videos and the links in the description. Have a good day, and be safe.